So if you're new to Oxygen or you've been on the outside looking in, wondering if this new update is going to tempt you away from the tools you're currently using with a range of must-have features that you just simply can't live without, you may be a little disappointed. However, if you're an Oxygen user and you use this on a daily basis and there have been little things that bug you, speed of loading, various different ways in which you work the interface itself, these may be features that really are game changers for you. However, this is going to be down to you as an individual, how you feel about the Oxygen 4.0 update and that 4.0 moniker. Okay, but first of all, let's take a quick look at what we have updated. I would recommend taking a look at the blog post and the change log for Oxygen 4.0 and the video that Elijah released a couple of days ago. This is going to cover a lot of things in, in depth. They are power users. They know what they're talking about. I'm just going to give you a skimming over the top so you can see some of the key new things that have been added. Check that out. There's a lot of information inside there, giving you all the info about all the different updates, tweaks, bug fixes, enhancements, and so on. Speaking of which, there's over 120 bug fixes, tweaks, and enhancements in this update. So even though it may not look like there's a lot has changed, there's an awful lot that's gone on underneath the hood. So you can check that out, take a little look, watch the video, have a quick overview of this and see what you think. While we're on the subject, there is a special limited price going on. I don't know how limited this is or how long it's been going on for, but as you can see, that's the options at the moment. You can have basic, which just gives you a lifetime unlimited license to just oxygen on its own. And then you can move on up from there to the WooCommerce agency and the ultimate plans. 60 day money back guarantee on all of these. So if you are looking at oxygen and this is something you want to jump into, now may be a good time. No affiliate links, no link, no connection whatsoever. Just pointing out a saver that you may want to take advantage of right now. So first of all, I've gone ahead and created a simple WordPress setup. Pretty much oxygen is the only thing that's installed and I've created a blank page and I've set up a template for a header and a footer and a content area just so I don't waste your time showing you how to do all those things. So first things first, let's see how much snappier if it is snappier, the oxygen option is when we enable it. So we'll click on edit with oxygen. I'm not going to speed this up or anything else. So we'll see exactly what it's like in real time as I go ahead. So there's a new animation on here telling you exactly what's going on. And as you can see, it breaks down all the different things that's going on under the scenes. Now that is relatively snappy. I mean, one of the criticisms they leveled at oxygen over the years is it is not the fastest to open up and start working with. That seems okay, but then again, I've got a pretty simple install. More complex pages, more complex sites will obviously slow this down. So your mileage is definitely going to vary when it comes to how quick this is going to be to work with. But what I have found when I test this out earlier on today, just to kind of run through and refresh my memory on some of the things we've updated, is the interface itself when you're inside Oxygen is feeling really, really snappy. So hopefully this is one of those areas that Things I found in the past where, especially when working with dynamic data, it could become really, really clunky and slow. Hopefully these are the things that have been addressed. Like I say, my first experience so far has been this is pretty nippy to work around. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may notice a couple of things. The interface has changed a little bit, and you'll know that the UI has been one of my biggest bugbears when it comes to working with Oxygen. They have made leaps and bounds forward. There's still room for improvement in my opinion, but like I say, these are personal preferences. I know people that absolutely love the Oxygen interface and those that absolutely think it's terrible. So again, it's a personal preference. But let's take a quick look at the immediate things that we can see have changed. If we take a look at the top left-hand side, you can see now all the mobile responsive options are available, which we can simply click and go ahead and take a look at those directly on screen. And you can see everything updates pretty quickly. So nothing we haven't already seen there. But like I say, nice to have them front and center, quick and easy. No digging around in separate sections. You'll also notice that we've got this little option to hide the sidebar, which is a nice little thing to have. Again, one of those things that we've had this with most builders for a long time with the preview modes and things like that. So when you're working on a smaller monitor, like a laptop or something, when you want to just strip out all that real estate, all the panels so you can see the design you're working on, that is a welcome change to be brought in. And we could just click on that to bring it back. I would like to see, and this is just nitpicky now more than function. I would like to see that being sort of animated or something, even if it's like a, a half second animation or something just to make it feel a little smoother. And maybe even where you've got this little tag to click to hide the sidebar, that that pops out because on a smaller screen, that could be a little bit awkward to get to with, you know, Small amounts of real estate. So maybe make that something when you hover over it, it pops out a little bit, doubles in size just to make things easier to click on. But like I see, these are little nitpicky things that are not 
massively important when you're day-to-day -day working in tools like this. And also maybe even the option for using the uh, tab key to hide all the areas on screen so everything disappears and just shows us the preview window like we're kind of used to with desktop applications. Hit the tab key and then all the panels will hide just to show you the actual content that you're currently working on. Little things could make a big difference. Now, if we move over to the top right hand side, you can see where we used to have some kind of clunky looking panels that took up quite a lot of real estate at the top of the screen. They've now been removed to streamline the whole interface. For example, we can open up the structure panel in the same way, but now we've got a nice, clean, simple way of working. Your history panel, your settings, which still breaks down your page settings, global styles and so on. So no much difference there. Your style sheets, your selectors and your exit to option and also your save. But again, one of those little things that just opens up the interface to give you a bit more room to work with, especially, like I say, on smaller screens. So good to see that. Now, before we go any further, I've pulled in a couple of templates for the headers and those kinds of things. And this leads me on to one of the things I still think needs work when it comes to oxygen. And I think if we come down to, for example, the library, You've got to go into design sets, then you've got to go into, for example, BMB, then you've got to go into sections and elements, then you've got to go into which section or element you want, and then you can take a look at the various different layers inside there. That's an awful lot of clicks to get to something. I'm not really sure why they haven't employed the same kind of setup that we used to in pretty much every other builder when it comes to WordPress or Gutenberg which is just a library browser. You want to insert something, there's a link at the top that just says insert a template, at which point you can click and open up any of the page templates, the block templates, or any templates that you create yourself and insert those directly into your page. This still seems really, really clunky. So I'm not really sure why they haven't addressed that and hopefully they will address that maybe it's a case that they don't want you to use these templates, you know, you should be starting from scratch. I don't know. But again, it's one of those things, if they've got the time and effort to do so much to the interface, these are still things that I think really should be addressed to bring it in line with what we're expecting from today's builders. Even, like I say, Gutenberg page block builders, they have this built in to start off with. Just a little quirk. Anyway, let's hop back out of this. And this will show us a couple of different things. Whenever you've got anything selected that has any of the settings changed for any of those responsive breakpoint modes, you'll see we get a little purple underline now that tells us. So when we select something, for example, you can see we select this slide, nothing has been set up inside there for mobile responsive. However, if we select something that has been set up for those responsive modes, you'll see we get underlines across all of these different sections, these different breakpoints. Or we'll hover over, you'll see it tells us the breakpoint size, and we've got this little X in the corner that allows us to clear any of the settings that have been set up for those breakpoints on that specific element on our page. So again, little things that do make a big difference when it comes to a visual way of working inside Oxygen itself, which leads me on to some of the other things that have been done. And again, these are little things that I think a lot of people will really appreciate when you work with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And this is where I'm kind of coming from saying it's not game-changing, it's more just a case of it gives you so much more visual feedback to see what's going on, which is always a good thing when you have a tool as complex as this. So if we take a look now, you can see any of the areas that have either classes or we've got IDs set up on there. You can see they're color coded. So this is using ID information. So you can see we've got this little blue line on the left hand side. This is referencing information that's being set up inside the class. And as you can see, this now gives us the green outline. If we switch to different responsive modes, you can see those values change. And you will also see things like this where it's ghosted out. So these are values that are inherited from either the class or an ID, but they've ghosted this out to say there's a value that's been applied to this and you can change it if you want to, but it tells you visually there's already a value that's been inherited in this particular font weight, for example. So you can see very quickly where those are being applied, where they're being used, and if they're flowing down through, you can see we've got a visual representation of the value that's being used inside that particular selection. All useful little features, like I say, that just speed up when you're working. You can see these values, really, really cool to see that. If you hop over into advanced, and we come into our size and spacing, where we've got padding and margins, if we go ahead and we use the value of none, 
What happens now is you can type in a long string of characters inside here to use this particular feature. And before you literally had this tiny little box which would make it a bit of a pain in the behind. However, once you click inside there now, it expands to take up all the space. No, it's not perfect because it still only gives you a small amount of space and you can't actually resize this left-hand section to give you more room, but it's a starting point. So it would be nice if this would sort of pop up over the top of everything so you could get maximum space inside the entire left-hand panel. So my understanding is this will actually flow out to other parts of the interface. You can see, for example, at the moment where we click on width, set that to none, that's already taken up the overall space. So again, it would be nice to see that expand to take up more space, give us another way of working to give us more room to work with that and type in the long string of information we may want to put into that. But again, little tweaks that can make a massive difference for users that are doing this day in and day out. Now, when we're talking about the interface itself and some little things to just make life a lot easier, We've now got some additional ways in which we can name various different parts of our page. So for example, this heading number 10, which means nothing, we can now just simply come in, double click and type that into something else. Hit return and that's now been updated. And you could do the same if we open up the structure panel from the right hand side, you can see text number nine, for example, I can simply double click inside there and we can change that to whatever value we want. So little things that make the whole process of naming the various different parts, good housekeeping as it were, have been added in and again just making things considerably quicker and easier now this leads me on to the option where we can go ahead and add our elements in if we click to open that up that's had a bit of a facelift as well you can see i've got some extra plugins installed inside here for oxygen so you may see more than you would normally see on just an oxygen install but it's good to see that this has moved over to a much more page builder-esque layout that we're kind of used to. One thing that I would still like to see is the ability to pin these to our favorites so we can just pin what we use the most often in an entire project or in just a project we're currently working with and maybe even make that exportable so we could share that with various different installations of uh, Oxygen. But it's already considerably better now to see these laid out. It already looks a little bit more fresh and modern and it's a good job they've done. Like I say, it's still very Oxygen-esque but the improvements are definitely welcome. Still just needs a few more, in my opinion, just from a usability point of view to make the whole experience of working with Oxygen just a little bit smoother. But good to see that they've gone ahead and tidied this up, made it a little bit more fresh and modern. But like I say, let's have that pinned option so we can have favorites just to speed up with the tools we use on a regular basis. <music> Up until now, keyboard shortcuts in Oxygen have been relatively limited and not necessarily the most reliable feature. That's now been updated inside 4.0. We've also got some extra keyboard shortcuts and we can copy and paste, not only on our design of the page we're working on, but also in between different pages in a project on a website. Obviously not between different websites, but on the same project. So that's pretty cool to see. And we can use keyboard shortcuts. So for example, let's go ahead and grab this hero slider We'll simply do Control or Command C to copy, and then Control or Command V to paste. And you can see now we've got a duplicate of that hero slider all set up. Now we can go ahead and make any changes we want very easily. We can undo that with Command Z or Command Z, whichever country you're from, and you see it undoes it as well. And it's a little bit more reliable. Again, these are things that are not gonna change the world, but they do make working with Oxygen a little bit smoother, a little bit faster, especially when you get used to using keyboard shortcuts in any kind of work project. So check out the information to find out exactly what keyboard shortcuts are now being supported. Now the image element inside Oxygen has had a few changes made to it, primarily to do with image size and also alt tag information. So let me just quickly go ahead and insert the image. So we'll just tag this and insert this into this area. Doesn't really matter where it goes. It now defaults to the media library, which has a few different options associated with it. I'd recommend checking out Elijah's video. You'll go into more details about this. But one of the key areas that this works with is it will automatically pull in the alt tag information from the image from the media library itself, whereas previously you had to set that manually inside Oxygen. So that's a good thing. Secondly, you'll see this pulls in the full size image, which is what it's always done. However, so for example, if we choose an image, We'll grab this one and select it. 
you can see we can change this from full size to any of the other sizes that we have available. So if you have a small image space, but you've got the full size image on a large page with multiple images, that can get a massive overhead. So it's good to see now that we have what I would consider a pretty basic feature being included. So we can set this to medium and you can see we get a smaller image. So you can set those up directly inside you. You'll also notice we've got a lazy load option now. So we can choose that and that will then lazy load any images that are below the fold inside your design, which means you won't have to wait for those to load, which will slow down the overall page. So good to have lazy load integrated directly into the oxygen builder itself. So those in combination with each other should make working with images considerably easier and more performant on your entire site. Now these are some of the key features that have been released in Oxygen 4.0, but there are still more going on under the, the hood, some more complex ones. So I would recommend checking out Elijah's video. Now, if you want to learn more about Oxygen and how to get started with it and how to go a lot further with it, there are a couple of channels I would recommend checking out on YouTube to give you a real good head start on getting moving forward with Oxygen. First of all, check out Permaslug's channel. He's doing an amazing job of creating lots of great tutorials when it comes to working with Oxygen. That's probably the primary channel I would recommend checking out. Also, make sure you check out Stratos Tutorials over on YouTube as well. He's doing a great job of creating content, not only around Oxygen, but he has a lot of Oxygen-based content. And obviously, you also need to go ahead and check out the official Oxygen channel, where Elijah and Co. do a lot of great work in showing you how to get more out of Oxygen itself. But as always, I would welcome your feedback. Do you think these are changes that are important to you? Are you an Oxygen user and you've been waiting for some of these? Let me know in the comments section down below. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tets, and until next time, take care.